We're back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Glad to say we have joining us for Off the Press, which is our daily news super review segment. Uh, Oponabo in Kotaria, uh, former um, special assistant to uh, the River State Government or Governor uh, on Information and Communication. Uh, Miss Kotaria, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Special advisor. I don't know how that came out. Sorry about that. Yes, indeed. You were a special advisor. I appreciate it. And we, we had a good relationship <laughs> when I was in Cross in Rivers in River State. Thank you very much for, for your time with Panabo and Kotari. And Happy New Year to you. Yes. Good morning, Kofi. Happy New Year. Good morning, Nigerians. All right. Fantastic. Um, we'll, we'll start off with a look at the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, indeed, the political season is heating up. Uh, there's a lot that's happened since the last time I was here, uh, which was last year. Well, the big one there, uh, Tinubu, I'll be fair to all tribes. I will be fair to all tribes. APC candidate, unstoppable, says Kwara Governor. Uh, Gambije, he is a product of unity. All right. Uh, more from the nation. Security spreads net to rescue 31 trained travelers in Edo State. A rivers bars a Tiku's campaign from public schools, PDP candidate in the UK. Business review for 2023, so loot to Nigerians, shun evil predictions. Uh, there is for us, Villa, some of the titles there on the front page of the nation. Fog's attack, Osho APC campaign office. 13 new COVID-19 cases reported in Lagos Edo. Um, and the LEA intercepts drug consignments in wooden statue. And Chris Azoluka is TEF's CEO. Uh, some of the stories on the front page of the nation. Quickly uh, to the next paper, which is The Punch. And the lead story on The Punch New Super, no surprises there, has to do with the Edo train attack. Uh, it says soldiers, please, vigilantes, track abductors. 31 passengers missing, of course, there were 32 of Dr. Ria, one escaped uh, to freedom, to safety. Uh, right as to that, railway workers, non-passengers, Southeast residents among abductees, NRC bus official, uh, two underage victims rescued, suspect arrested as FG, or Basaki condemned kidnapping. More from the paper, electricity consumers demand new tariff reversal. I think uh, it's uh, quite a troublesome one. Um, for a lot of us who are having to pay uh, a lot for that. FG pays 4.12 trillion naira interest on CBN loan. Uh, agents protest as customs hike imported vehicle duty. Raids, air chief regrets, civilian casualties, orders probe. Armed forces remembrance, governors seek support for fallen soldiers' families. Jackpa, more youth uh, sell assets, seek fortunes abroad. <laughs> Call for missing baby probe rises. Government mum. And forex allocation to telecom sector drops. Let's quickly go to the Guardian with these stories. The lead one. Search and going for 31 abductees in a Doe State train station attack. Uh, reverse unlawful electricity tariff hike. Sarap urges Buhari. Articus aid denies ill health rumors ignore propaganda lp on ground in north spokesman assures nigerians why some southeast politicians businessmen are opposing obi by obidi obidibo okay uh, more from the guardian someone who urges nigerians to shun evil predictions ahead of general election and don't take consumers for granted energy experts charge this goes uh, some of the headlines on the front page uh, of The Guardian, and that's our last paper uh, this morning. Open up, Angotaria. We have a discussion on the situation in Edo State uh, as far as the train attack is concerned, but I'd like to give you a, a few minutes or a minute to just say something about this, some things about it, because it's quite worrying, uh, traumatizing, to say the least. Are you talking about Edo State? Yeah, uh, train, train attack. attack. Yes. Well, it is, it is quite tragic and more so worrisome. I mean, um, I think these trains and train stations have become targets of attacks. Uh, the last one, of course, we're all aware of what happened. 
and uh, that stopped uh, train services for quite some time. It was put on hold for quite some time to ensure that all the necessary safety measures are put in place. And so with the resumption of uh, the train services, we all expected that the federal government would have done its own work properly to ensure the protection of lives, the safety of lives. But you see, this is even more disturbing in the sense that this one did not just happen while the train was uh, uh, in motion. Let me say, uh, well, I say, was running real. It really happened at the station. And this calls to question the preparedness of the federal government to actually commence and sustain the train services. Because at the stations, we expected security guards. At least we should have the police, we should have the uh, DSS, and all the security operators stationed there, knowing too well that the train services shall be target of uh, uh, these criminals. So the mere fact that they, without any resistance, that these uh, criminals went and abducted all those that abducted, including the station manager and so on, without any resistance, that is the key word there, is quite disturbing, extremely disturbing. It shows that the federal government uh, uh, has uh, taken treated lives of Nigerians with levy, you know, the borderless. Why would you tell me that you don't have security guards at that point? Because no gunshots were fired. There was no resistance. I mean, the abductors just went in there, abducted their, their, their uh, well, victims and walked away. It's so much ease. It's, it's quite disturbing. I think the federal government should do more. Or if they cannot ensure the protection of life, then let us stop the, the train services in this country until when they are sure that they can protect lives. Very important. We are not just talking of uh, attacks in on the rails. We are now talking of attacks and patients. They're taking the fight to your doorstep. And you're doing nothing about that. It's, it's disturbing, honestly. All right, let's uh, go stay with the Guardian newspaper. Um, talks of the, the health situation, uh, the health condition of uh, presidential candidates uh, really rife in this season ahead of next uh, this year's presidential election. Um, Atiko Walker is his turn to, to have that scrutiny. I mean, throughout the weekend, lots of um, rumors surrounding his, his health. Uh, an aide to Atiku has come out, as quoted by the Guardian newspaper, uh, the story is on page three of The Guardian this morning, saying that uh, uh, he's denying Atiku's ill health, Ill health rumors. What are your thoughts on that? Because um, some have said the man has not been walking well. Um, he's jetted off to Dubai to take care of his health. He's nowhere to be found in recent days as far as the campaigns are concerned. Well, uh, Kobe, I am not here to ascertain the veracity or even the apocryphalness of that report. Uh, first and foremost, let me state this, that um, I think he's a human being. And we are all prone to human beings. Even kids fall sick. And that's why you have the pediatricians. They fall sick. And don't forget that he has been touring this pediatrician to campaign. He's a human being. As there are, in fact, I just got back from my elder brother's burial on Saturday, and he's so rest in peace. Yeah, I see. Since he called yes, on, yes. on, on so, that open about. Yes, the, uh, the architect who died at 58. You know. Uh, and uh, all through Sunday, I was sleeping. By the way, I don't have any medical condition. I'm not even hypertensive, I'm not diabetic, but I'm not a human. As a result of the preparation preceding the I am just a brother, not even a son. And you can imagine what the son would have gone and the, and the wife. So we are all human beings and we are prone to human frailties. And illnesses and sicknesses are part of the frailties of human beings. So if I think today has gone for medical checkup, of course, I'm not so at this age. You know, I mean, once you're, you're 40, they say your, your, your system changes. You have to adjust. At 50, the same thing. I say, so what are we talking about? There is no human being on earth that doesn't fall sick. There is no one on earth that doesn't fall sick. But it becomes worrisome when one is a terminal illness or when one is going to affect your job, the discharge of your job. That is when it becomes a, for example, as you're going senile, 
if you're having amnesia, if you're unable to walk, then definitely it's going to affect the job. Because you will not commit yourself to that job the way you ought to. That is when it becomes worse. Otherwise, somebody has malaria, somebody has typhoid, or even BP that is being managed and your doctor is abroad and you want to go and see, what's that? What's wrong with that? So, uh, the whole thing is being uh, uh, blown out of proportion, if at all it is, because like I said, I cannot speak for now if a teacher is actually sick or not. I know this is an area of propaganda where even when you fly out to go and do something else, they'll say, ah, it's one of the medical trip. You know, just to discredit the candidate. One of his professors has come up to say, it's a lie that that story is not true, that that could just travel. But well, whatever it is, even let us assume without conceding that he's actually sick. What is wrong with that? He has, he has never, he has but, never but disappointed he, he, anybody. He, he, wants, he, he, wants he didn't to disappoint be. anybody during the campaign. So what I'm saying, he didn't disappoint anybody during the campaign, like uh, uh, faltering, like stumbling, like making some numbering some incomprehensible statements and so no, so we didn't we didn't get all those things his, mm. his mental faculties are intact okay so uh, there's no problem if he actually travels out uh, it travels abroad for that there is nothing wrong with that yeah we but, all travel abroad for but, but, but he 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 is no not a young man anymore i mean he's um a uh, uh, 76 so years old the issue of age, shy of the issue 80 of age. So, so i mean yeah, my, so my, 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 my father passed on at 78 and I took care of him for, me for you, uh, 79. Let me tell you I took care of him for three years. You know. Kofi, let, me, listen, let, me yes. let me tell you something yeah. about age. Biden is how old? Joe Biden. Now, like, yeah. you said your father passed on, your father passed on at uh, 78 or thereabouts. My father died at 94. My father smoked cigar. Drank his brandy, his stout, till the day he died. He was a judge, so you cannot say he was. So, and when I mean a judge, you can mean you can. If you see judges that are actually working, you can see most of them go frail, gray hair, and everything, because the, the challenges are enormous. You know, so he died at 94. No high blood pressure, no diabetics, no glasses. He used walking stick intermittently because he was a paramount chief. He never used walking stick at home. He died at 94. He didn't have amnesia. So he was not senile. Yeah, but, 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 but we don't. Yeah. One minute. No, I'm, 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 I'm not talking you about say, uh, your, 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 fa your father's. Uh, see, I'm addressing you. mentioned your dad. Let's, I, let's keep let me land. I know what I'm saying. All right. All right. Go on. Yes. We went to the UK, came back a few days later, he died. My mom died at 78. He was 24 years older. So it is not age. That's the point I'm making. And when my father died, he died with his younger brother, sorry, at one week in summer, who was the Surgeon General of River State. One week after, he was 17 years older than him. That one died yeah, of course. So, 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 but, but, so it has yeah, not been the yeah, point I, I'm I, making. I, is, yeah. it, it is not the age. I, I get your matters. point. I get your point. My, my dad was 79 when he passed. Atiku is alive. I, 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 Atiku is alive. My <laughs> elder brother, 58, is, is dead. He's already yeah. buried. So what yeah. are we talking about? I, I, I get your point. Um, it's not about the age, you know, one passes on. I'm not saying that um, you can't it's leave. It's about your... how strong. That's what no, I'm saying. That. I, 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 I'm, I'm just saying that from what people are saying, uh, it's been reported some tabloid was the first. I was, it's a particular tabloid was the first one to report that uh, you know the man was sick and that's why he was flown from Dubai in the UAE to London for medical treatment uh, attention. Um, I'm saying that when, when you, for most people, not for everyone, for most people, when you get to the, your 70s, you begin to um, you know watch it. You begin to take it slowly. I'm not saying it's impossible to be a president at that time. But if you are at the age of 76, you know, uh, and you begin to have health checks, you are admitted to the hospital, um, and there are speculations around your health, shouldn't that be taken seriously? And shouldn't that be a, a serious question? That is what as I far am as saying. That your push for the president plan, is concerned. I just told you, Kofi, I just told you this is political error. So, planted interpretations will move into excuse the situations like this by your political opponents, just to discredit you. Otherwise, 
Medically, they tell you once you're 40. That's what they tell you medically. Mm -hmm. And of course, as I say, so shall I spend it. No doubt about that. Peter B cannot claim to be, who is supposed to be one of the youngest, cannot claim to be as strong as Kofi Man. So if you are looking at just the age alone, then Peter B should also not contest. That doesn't look for a Kofi Man to contest. But we're not, so talking, well, we're not talking about Peter B here. I didn't mention his name. No, but, I yeah. so, 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 if, I so what you're saying, uh, Open Abundant, just to understand you, what you're saying is that even if Atiku is in the hospital in UK right now, uh, as far as his run for the presidency is concerned, it's not an issue. That's what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. I said it depends on what I've taken into the hospital. That's what I said. Okay, okay. Okay. It depends. That's what I'm point I'm making. It depends. We all fall sick. I said it from the one. We all fall sick. Okay. Hmm. But it depends, provided it is not something like um, uh, I said it. I said you you just suffer from amnesia. You are not senile. You don't have the terminal. These are the things I mentioned that when I started. I said it depends on the sickness. So if you, if you have headache and malaria and stuff, but I mentioned, would you go to the hospital? So it all depends on the kind of sickness you have. All right, so, so is, 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 it, is it that um, uh, so you believe that Atiku Abokar left the UAE, left Dubai to go to London because of something that could easily be treated? For him it's to go to, the, to, to London doctor. doesn't mean it's something it's really possible, serious. It's possible that's where his doctor is. It's possible he, he, he might even be going in for surgery. I said possible. This is a hypothesis. If he's going in for surgery, he would definitely go to where his doctor is. All right. <laughs> and, and I, I open up, I, I, with, with, between 9, 13 and 20, I had six surgeries. So surgery has nothing to do with eight. I had six surgeries. So surgery too has nothing to do with eight. If he has, if that's where I remember my first surgery when I did it here, the second one because Dr. Yanni had left for London, we flew to London for me to do the surgery. But, but Mr. Otaria, I'm sure you're aware that um, having a surgery in your 20s, or 30s, or even 40s, it's way different from having a surgery in your 70s. I agree. Now, the Late point 70s. I am making is that he left UAE to the, for uh, London does not mean the case is that severe. Maybe that's where he has his consultant. You have you get to the bachelor age where you have a consultant that knows your medical history. And if you can afford it, why not? I lost my friend, my second cousin, Dr. Tiazia Macri. Just because the, when we rushed him to the hospital, the doctors who did not know my doctor to save his life gave him an injection and that was what killed him. Dr. T.S. that's what killed him. Sound brain. And that's how we lost him. Because the man he was trying to save his life. So he gave him an injection. That injection was what killed him. So he would definitely go to where a, to meet a doctor who knows his medical history. Even you, Kofi, if you have a problem, you do rush to a doctor that you're close to. It's human nature. All right. All right. Mr. Gutera, thank you very much. Um, on the front page of the leadership, we didn't have the time to look at all the stories there, but I'll take one for now. Uh, Peter Obi, the, uh, the Labour Party's presidential candidate, uh, has uh, uh, um, uh, some coverage that he says, quote, I will, a fuel subsidy will go. Uh, says Obi's what the paper is saying. I'm sure that must be from... Uh, his appearance at the town hall, town hall series last night. What are your thoughts on that? Fuel subsidy will go. It seems it's already going because in some places, I hear in, in well, Peach, well, you're, you're paying 400 naira. Yeah. Do we still have fuel subsidy? Fuel subsidy is just a drain pipe. It's just a conduit pipe. We still, if we have subsidy and we are buying fuel like 500 naira per liter from filling stations in Port Harcourt, I understand that Abuja is still 180 or thereabouts. But in Portaco, it's 500 naira. So where is the subsidy? If you remove the subsidy, we'll still go, and go, go for 1,000 naira per liter. Then there won't be any nation. So I don't think there is where subsidy at all. It's just a cartel. Can like you see a cartel who goes in charge of the, 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 the industry, maximizing profits at the expense of other Nigeria. And the federal government is doing nothing about it. So is, is, no, is, is, should I, is that a reason maybe you think uh, would you say this man who is saying fuel subsidy will go categorically, um, maybe maybe the right person to handle this situation from leading candidates? Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying he's not the right person. Probably he has his own uh, uh, magic wand. 
I'm not saying it's the right brand. I think Kutu has said well, that we we'll talk about first subsidy. Tidibu has talked about first subsidy. It is not the mountain. It is the act. You talked about the cartel. Are sick and tired. Which candidate? Are sick and tired of, yeah. yeah. Which candidate you Sorry. think has the political will? Looking at the leading candidates now, three or four of them. Which of them do you think I has think a the political, political will, 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 to, will to dismantle any cartel? You know, arrangement. I don't tell you, Atiku has the political will. Amongst all of them, the the largest prospect he of doing that. He has the political will. He's been there. He knows what it is. He knows what it takes, and he knows how to go about it. He has the financial to all of it. All right. Interesting. Uh, let, let's move on to other stories. Do Atiku has said, I think his plan is to sell, you know, sell sell government assets. I'm sure, probably privatize an NPC, uh, even though they are private. But no, they're not wholly private if now. If you want us, if you want that, us to go into that, that, we can go into that. But that will be a topic for another day when it comes to selling privatizing government assets. We will go into that. Don't forget, Atiku was a vice president. I could say Atiku, Atiku, Atiku. What did the person just say in 2019 when he, when he, when he recommended that ticket? Hmm. What did he say? He said he has all it takes to revamp the economy. He has all it. He said all that. Forget but but, but, but this, same, this same passenger um, now is not endorsing Atiku. He's endorsing uh, he's another a, he's man. A man of double, he's a man of double stick. We all know him. He's a man of double stick. So in 2019, was, was he, why should we trust what he said about Atiku in 2019 since he's a man of double stick? I'm not saying I would, because you see the truth about it is that Kofi, I can say Kofi is the best broadcaster today, and tomorrow I now say, oh, um, Messi is the best broadcaster. That does not vitiate the fact that I recognize your abilities. Hmm. All right, all right. Anyway, let, let, let's go on. Um, it seems all is not too well with the families of Nigerians. Uh, fallen here, heroes. Um, as we mark Armed Forces Remembrance Day, you know, there's been talk of uh, the difficulties that families of Nigeria's ex servicemen are having to go through. On the front page of the punch, there is a little story, a caption at the bottom of that front page uh, Armed Forces Remembrance, governors seek support for fallen soldiers' families. Um, it seems that the state governors are the ones who may be coming to the rescue of uh, the families of these ex-service men. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this and how they, they're being treated? Um, are they asking for too much, maybe? Because I know that this current administration, I, I, uh, Buhari when, had... When, yeah. when, even, when even those in service have not been properly taken care of, are you talking about those that have retired? That will be asking for too much. Those in service have not been properly taken care of. The remuneration, the incentives, almost zero. We've heard of uh, mutiny on two occasions. We've heard of a situation where even the soldiers had to shoot uh, uh, a captain or thereabouts. And even those that uh, uh, were sent on the rescue mission to rescue the adoptees, what some of those who went who took the money down said that the soldiers said, this is how they feel. They just sent them here to, for them to die. They had no equipment to even fight these uh, uh, criminals. So if they cannot take care of the serving ones, are they, uh, is it the, uh, are they the retirees that they will take care of? Okay. So that will be asking for too much. That's the truth about it. And that's why our soldiers are like, look at when they send them out. You see how, how successful they become. Because the United Nations will, uh, their co will ensure that they give to them more than the, what they need. Mm. Okay. But in this country, you get 10% of what you need. Mr. Ngotara, let's just quickly, very quickly and very briefly look at one. I think uh, I won't be fair to you as a reverse man, uh, reaching his life from Portacourt, if I don't allow you to speak on this. On the front page of the nation, a final take, uh, Rivers bars articles campaign from public schools. The political appreciation of uh, Atiku by Amechi is not in doubt. Uh, by Amechi or by, by Wike or Amechi? Oh, sorry, by Wike, sorry, by Wike, not in doubt. Okay. They said, uh, thank you for that correction. They said, uh, recently they have just paid 95 million naira for PPP to campaign. And they asked the question. Thank God, I wake him himself was the one who said he, he has been the one sponsoring PDP and maintaining PDP. So he has used the state funds to buy, to pay for, to pay 95 million, if that is true. Because they can just ask, 
the Ministry of Education to conjure receipts and say they pay. But let us even assume that, yes, they pay. How many political parties can pay 95 million uh, to campaign just to pay for uh, locations? How many political parties to pay just for locations? As for Article's own case, you know, he has sworn that Atiku will not win the presidential election. And so he, do, he will do anything to ensure that Atiku does not even get the 25% of the reverse. But that is wishful thinking, because Atiku will win the reverse. All right. All right. Open up, going to open up, Thank you very much for your time. We we'll keep an eye on activities in River State, uh, especially as it concerns uh, uh, freedom, democracy, the rule of law. I think these are issues uh, to keep talking about. Thank you so much for time. Please accept our condolences on the Thanks. the passing of your your brother. Uh, may it's so my, it's my pleasure. May so rest in peace. My pleasure. Amen. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And that's much we will take uh, for now on Off the Press. We'll return in a matter of minutes uh, as we dive into our first major conversations. We'll look at the, the situation in Edo State with the kidnap of travelers and the attack on the train station uh, in Edo State. We'll be back. Please stay with us.